the bansi sabu show i call this as a bansi sabu show so it's like welcome to everybody <coughs> the topic allocated to me is 25 years of akarbos in india and with me i have a colleague of mine who is now in ohio but was a resident with me at km hospital when i was doing dm endocrine when we did a phase 3 registration trial for akarbos in india it's the first uh, of its kind trial we did at the km hospital so i am i am reminded of that and that time we used to have uh, all manual records everything was physical consent also was very physical there were only three translations and that is the time we did this uh, work uh, akarbos uh, session is sponsored by bear zaidus and i have a conflict of interest with them uh, though i am not paid for this doc but i do have a conflict of interest with them and i have been associated with them for last 25 years so you know it's an agent with evidence base in indian and chinese population if you go to china the most prescribed drug in any category is not a multivitamin like in india it is a multivitamin or a or a insulin i don't want to take trade names here in china the most frequently used drug in any category of medicine is acarbos i think after chinese herbal medicine they take acarbos everybody takes acarbos because they all have starch and indians also eat starch so in 97 it was approved for type 2 diabetes it was in 99 the dcgi then approved it for type 1 diabetes as an adjuvant to insulin because a lot of our type 1 diabetics actually gain weight and this starch blocker acarbos actually was approved in 99 by dcgi and it was the first drug to be approved in pre diabetes in india for igt in 2006 because the bear german team actually did research trials for them so it was approved for type 2 diabetes in 97 99 type 1 diabetes 2006 igt and it also has a category b approval for pregnancy and diabetes in fact in singapore diabetes guidelines if you see its lifestyle then it's acarbos then is metformin then is insulin for gdm so it it is it is very safe to be used in pregnancy and across the world acarbos was approved in 90 1990 it's approved in 117 countries including us fda and is of course a very widely used alpha glucoside inhibitor but unfortunately we have been using too much of oglibos this is the only it's a actually a biotechnology product it is made through a fermenter so it, it's technologically very expensive to make so we know that how is a glucoside as inhibitor developed you know professor tripathi is going to tell you about another molecule and he will tell you a basic science but we know that whatever we eat we eat carbs we eat fat and we know that our metabolic control is all in the diet and is deeply ingrained in nutritional behavior and we don't understand our 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 diet very well and which is why we get all this long term type 2 diabetes is under, not under control and we get we need to manipulate intestinal digestion and absorption and therefore enzyme inhibitors like glycoside hydroxylase in the intestine showed 50% reduction in post prandial glucose levels our problem is prandial glucose whatever you eat whether it's breakfast lunch or dinner our prandial glucose goes up and it's all our glycoside hydrolyzes and therefore it is a very unique mechanism of action particularly it is very important because indians we eat a lot of carb rich diet and alpha glycoside is inhibition leads to delayed intestinal carbohydrate absorption that's the first thing it lowers the post meal glucose it reduces the need of insulin for on the beta cells it improves insulin sensitivity and we also know that when carbohydrates are pushed into the lower intestine they actually stimulate the k and the l cells to make glp1 so it's a inbuilt gliptin it's the first inbuilt gliptin and also if it goes further down it causes symbiosis or gut microbiome so acarbos is very unique agent because it not only improves the prandial glucose and insulin sensitivity but also enhances physiological glp1 secretion and gut microbiota so that that data is very clear cut how is it different from others like wogligos and miglitol because those are the other two because acarbos is involved in the degradation of disaccharides oligosaccharides and polysaccharides and we all know that the enzymes we have in the intestine are alpha glucosidase in the pancreas is alpha amylase 
saliva is alpha amylase and they compete with polysaccharides and oligosaccharides so if you look at a carbose is the true alpha glucosidase inhibitor because it inhibits various alpha glucosidases in the order of glucoamylase sucrase maltase isomaltase and dextrinase and they also inhibit salivary pancreatic amylase while woglibos data is not available on what enzymes it inhibits it's not approved in more than 3 countries in the world and no action on pancreatic and salivary and it's only a disaccharide agent and miglitol has a little better data than woglibos because it is inhibiting sucrose glucoamylase isomaltase lactase and trilase it's again a disaccharide agent it has nothing to do with oligosaccharides and polysaccharides and that's why that little bit of flatulence you get with a carbose is very unique to it and it has to be taken with the first morsel of food so there's a big difference between a carbose woglibose and miglitol and that's what we need to recognize better we also know that when you took at structure the structural uniqueness renders acarbose as the only agi which allows polysaccharides to enter the large intestine for the gut microbiome because acarbose is a bigger molecule it's a pseudo tetrasaccharide while woglibose is a very small pseudo disaccharide and miglitol is smaller so acarbose is a unique alpha glucosidase inhibitor with a different structure and it has it is reducing the prandial glucose with a insulin sparing action again suitable for the indian diabetic patient and it actually resurrects the first phase of insulin secretion we know in type 2 diabetes the first thing to go and that's why it was approved in in pre diabetes was the early phase or the first phase of insulin secretion is resurrected by it so we have 25 years of indian clinical evidences of glycemic control with the carbose metformin in a carbose glp1 response glucose variability gut microbiota and it is one of the early agents stop nidium trial was the first cardiovascular outcome trial on planet earth much before all these cv outcome trials came for all these glt2 inhibitors and glp1 so glucose control with acarbose is robust this is a meta analysis from the cochrane review of 28 placebo randomized control trials which clearly show that the a1c droppage is very very robust up to a percentage the fasting glucose and prandial glucose both are dropped substantially with the area under the curve and this is more than 17 year old data and if you look at the 2013 meta analysis on eastern diet which is our diet on the asian population the a1c reduction with acarbose is 1.54% and this is a meta analysis of 46 studies rcts again so clearly it works it clearly also shows that it reduces the glucose under curve and this data was again an indian data which shows that the gluco vip multinational real world outcome study from india with 15000 plus patients clearly showed that it works on the glycemic control and lancet in 2014 published this data the march study metformin and acarbose in chinese initial hypoglycemic treatment and which clearly showed that newly diagnosed type 2 diabetic patients who have an exaggerated prandial glucose response are very well treated with acarbose and if you see the newer drugs for example dpp4 inhibitors or hgl2 inhibitors head to head the efficacy of acarbose is at par with both of them so this is real time data which i'm showing you and as i told you acarbose was the first agent on planet earth to have stop nidm patient in pre diabetes and it reduced the development of new diabetes by 25% and increased reversal it was the first remission drug and normalized glucose tolerance by 35% so it was a drug in remission also it's a ideal combination partner this is the initial phase 3 indian study of acarbose to metformin and dr jairam who used to be a professor at medicine at at uh, jj hospital had published this study in japi long time back almost 12 years back clearly showing that when you combine it acarbose with metformin there is a synergistic effect compared to that 
Wogley Bose is much more weaker. And that data is available on clinical.gov and they have not even published that data. And if you look at meta-analysis of alpha-glucosidase inhibitors, as it is a perfect second line after metformin, both in terms of A1C reduction and hypoglycemic events. So for all similar A1C reductions, there are differential hypoglycemic risks. And if you see the network meta-analysis of 62 RCTs with more than 32,000 patients, a carbose efficacy is similar to all OHs. Whether it's the glyptins or the glyphosines, head-to-head -head data, it's actually having an A1C drop higher than a glyptin or a AGL2 inhibitor as well. The reason for that is Acarbose has benefits beyond diabetes control. It has impact on GLP-1, it's an inbuilt glyptin. It reduces glycemic variability. It has a modulatory effect on gut microbiota and cardiovascular benefits. So Acarbose enhances G GLP-1 secretion because this is a publication from Japan which very clearly shows that when you have a carbose, it actually allows the various saccharides to go and stimulate the K and the L cells of the intestine to make GLP-1. This is the first data to show that after 60 minutes area under the curve of GLP-1 goes up because there is unabsorbed carbohydrate in the intestine. And adding our carbose to glucose levels significantly improved breakfast and prandial peaks on 24-hour CGMs. And Dr. Bansi Sabu is also involved with me in some of these works on CGM profiles. So acarbose clearly decreases intraday glycemic variability. The time in range comes very, very elegantly when you add acarbose. You can see the mage is 20 milligram lower. The standard deviation is lower and the overall time in range is better. And glycemic variability, even when you add a carbose to premixed insulin, which we often use in India, you can see the coefficient of variation, the mage, the standard deviation is statistically significant. The biggest advantage of a carbose today is its impact on gut microbiota. That fratulence, which is a socially unacceptable side effect, which Wogley Boss doesn't have, actually is beneficial to the heart. You know, a little bit of abdominal gas is good for the heart is what they say. And this is Chinese data, two publications in RCT, where you can see, they say that you are not rich in how much money you have in your bank, but you are rich in what type of microbiota you have in your intestine. And you can see here very clearly that after a carbose treatment in a randomized double-blind crossover trial, there is a higher abundance of the general like lactobacillus and dialister and lower the bad bacteria. So there is symbiosis, almost 40% of better bacteria are there. And these microbial alterations, because the carb in the lower intestine facilitate gut symbiosis. And you get good mycobacteria and, not, and bad bacteria are gone. What is the evidence that acarbose has cardiovascular benefits? Well, the ACE trial, which was the cardiovascular evaluation in IGT clearly showed it had a five point maze. See, now most of our CV outcome trials are using hospitalization of heart failure as an endpoint and translating it up. While Acarbose showed neutrality on five point maze, cardiovascular death, non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke, hospitalization for unstable angina and hospitalization for heart failure. And for hospitalization for heart failure, it was statistically significant. So if you just use the A study, and try to put it like a DAPA HF, the data is as robust, it's as significant. So really, it, 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 it had that impact, but they took the five-point maze. And you know that after the proactive study, people took off the non-fatal stroke completely. So Acarbose also has data from the Miria data to show that intervention with Acarbose prevents CV events in diabetic patients. And the real-world data published just four years back in the Endocrine Society Journal of the US showed if you use acarbose metformin, the incidence of stroke, atherosclerotic heart disease and mitral infarction events is significantly less. Hospitalization due to stroke, 33% relative risk reduction. Hospitalization due to atherosclerotic events, 31% relative risk reduction. Hospitalization due to mitral infarction, 34% relative risk reduction. So this is robust Asian data to show that it reduces that. And if you see the Beijing Community Diabetes Study, 10-year follow-up, 
Akar was reduced MI by 50%, all cause death by 52%. So it is the most widely used agent in China because it has outcome data on myocardial infarction and all cause death. And you can use it even in patient. And this is data from the COVID world from again China, where they use inpatient metformin acarbose. It reduced mortality of COVID patients with type 2 diabetes. This is again right out of the stable from Wuhan. So this data is published from Wuhan. And Dr. Makkar is here still. Whether you see the IDF guidelines, the AS guidelines, the RSSDI ESI guidelines, all the guidelines recommend AGIs from India, Japan, Korea, China and Taiwan because we are the CARP countries and we are clearly we know we have done the star strategy and we have shown that very clearly. So the key points are acarbose is a very very good anti-diabetic agent as a background therapy independent of baseline A1C, independent of duration of diabetes, independent of BMI, independent of patient's age. It's a very good geriatric drug. It can be used long term. Can, it need not depend on beta cell. It is useful on insulin resistance and can be used in all comorbidities. Thank you for a patient.